Roger, the downhill dodger, wasn't dodging the right balls today. The radio announcer from Newcastle has announced his presence to the world, with literally hundreds of millions of people watching his dash in the luge at Lillehammer. Roger set a personal best in his second run, finishing in 33rd position. Dodge picked up the sport after watching it on the telly last Winter Olympics. He'll get two more runs tomorrow. No doubt he'll be doing us proud with that great Aussie tradition of having a go. It was business as usual on the wharves today, vessels loading and unloading as normal. But this afternoon in a union meeting behind closed doors, members voted to force bans on overtime and double shifts on any Australian stevedore vessel coming into Newcastle. All other ships, including coal and grain vessels, are not affected. The industrial action is in support of maritime union bans around Australia following the sacking of 55 workers. Despite repeated attempts to speak with the maritime union, the union would not comment on the action. Australian Stevedore says it's disappointed with the deterioration of the dispute. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Immediately after the robbery on Friday, detectives examined the Building Society's security video. The offender was taped entering and leaving the premises. It took just seconds for him to make his demand for cash and leave with bundles of notes. As he approaches the teller, you can see what's thought to be a weapon wrapped in a plastic bag. There's something concealed within the plastic bag and uh, he did threaten the teller. So. Uh, we would certainly take it that he was armed with some type of weapon. The man was wearing a light-coloured long-sleeved shirt, blue jogging shorts with stripes down the side and a blue cap. He didn't have any shoes on. Detective Senior Constable Craig Mitchell believes someone may have seen the man fleeing from the shopping centre. The arm robbery occurred at approximately 20 to 4 on Friday afternoon. There was a number of people within Charlestown Square. Anyone with information should contact the Newcastle Armed Hold-Up Squad. Jody McKay, NBN News. safety and style. During a tour of the Hunter today, Senator Graham Richardson met members of the Musselbrook Aged Care Foundation. The group has been trying unsuccessfully for 13 years to get a nursing home built in the town. Each request refused on the grounds the Upper Hunter has filled its quota of nursing home beds with two aged care facilities in Singleton and one in Scone, 24 kilometres north of Musselbrook. A dozen aged long-stay patients living in Musselbrook are housed on the second floor of the local hospital. It is not just less than adequate, it's pretty woeful really. 
and being on the top floor with wanderers and things like that, it's, it's very dangerous as well. 750 people aged 70 or over live in Musselbrook. Foundation member Lou Fisher says that warrants a nursing home. Under the federal government's uh, usual policy arrangements, they have a ratio of 40 uh, nursing home beds per thousand population and 55 hostel places per thousand of population. One of the major concerns is former Musselbrook residents now residing in Scone nursing homes being separated and isolated from their family and friends because of the distance and lack of frequent public transport between the two towns. The Foundation wants a 40 bed facility to house elderly Musselbrook residents now living in Scone nursing homes and the long stay patients in Musselbrook Hospital. I'll go and talk to Brian Howe who, who has responsibility for this area I, I don't and also have a talk to the state government because they have a role too and see if we can between those two governments come up with some sort of solution. As a band-aid measure the group asked the senator to consider a request for half a million dollars funding to renovate a ground floor area in the hospital to relocate the long-stay patients. Catherine Lamond, NBN News. An octopus trailing its tentacles hundreds of metres across the city's skyscape and a giant puffer fish are just two of the eye catchers taking off on Kooragang Island. They're likely to be joined by flying turtles, a shark and a giant platypus, all draw cards to the Australian Kiting Championships. More than 100 competitors have registered from around Australia, New Zealand and the United States. The competition includes single line flyers and fighter kites, precision, stunt, ballet and power kite events. Whether permitting the power kites are hitched to racing buggies or tow their flyers through a ski slalom course. Saturday and Sunday afternoons should see spectacular team flying events, the winners of which will go to the World Cup. If you haven't heard already, tongues are wagging among the cast of rumours when friends of New York's Deputy Mayor arrived to celebrate his 15th wedding anniversary. They find him with a bullet hole in his head and a, a note that's been torn up and thrown away. Now they don't know exactly what's happened. His wife has disappeared, guests are turning up and they've heard rumours that the Deputy Mayor and the wife have had a little falling out. So, it sort of snowballs from there. Everyone's telling rumours. I mean, it's like real life. You always hear a rumour, but is it true? And that's what it's all about, really. It is a pure farce. There's one thing that I will say about Neil Simon. When he writes comedy, he writes good comedy. The production opens at the Repertory Theatre on Wednesday night. There's a rumour that it's a good show, is that true? Mm, yes, and it's not a false rumour either. <laughs> a good rumour. Of the 60 applicants for the job of helping to steer the Hunter's economic development for the next three years, only 12 made the cut. Shadow Development Minister Michael Egan attacked many of the appointees as being political cronies of the government. A mix of political representation, not chosen for that reason, but if you ask the people to put up their hand, I'm sure you'd find that mix. I haven't asked. I just stress that all of us are appointed uh, as individuals, not as representatives of any other organisational body. They are all chosen to take a, an ownership role of the whole of the Hunter uh, and the economic development and jobs creation in the whole of the Hunter. The council has seven new members to get on with the job of encouraging business development in the Hunter and capture its share of the government's $8 million regional development budget. 
Their task is to try to secure big jobs such as building mine hunters and also encouraging smaller business ventures. The growth of jobs in the private sector is the way to go. That's predominantly in small business, but of course uh, we're also interested in looking after the interests, uh, uh, maintaining the viability of our big industries as well. The council will also launch a feasibility study into shifting the road across Kooragang Island. It's thought that if the road ran further north, it would free up valuable river land for port activities. We're initiating a study about uh, what would be involved in shifting that road so that uh, more uh, very scarce uh, waterfront uh, land is made available for uh, economic development. The national link-up was staged from the Anchorage Resort at Corlett and featured a few roving reports from around the bay as well as crosses to Monty the weatherman at Little Beach. People who just joined us, Roscoe, we are at Little Beach, which is about um, uh, two beaches up from Nelson Bay. A crowd of curious locals was attracted to the television bright lights, a piece of early morning ice cream cake and some stooged fishing. It's still alive and well, look at that thing. God, you can hardly... Huge <laughs> flathead. Monty, tag it and throw it back. Co-hosts Steve Liebman and Tracy Grimshaw conducted interviews with local identities such as artist Neil Savage, who whipped up a canvas during the show, and the port's own fashion dynamo Lisa Chesterfield. At just 21, Lisa is looking to franchise her clothing design business, but is content to call Port Stephens home. I do want to go to a larger scale production with the daywear range. So, um, but, but I'm not out there fully looking for a backer. And yeah. still base yourself around here? Well, BHP's area. here, why can't I be here? <laughs> well, I couldn't think of a better argument. Lisa, <laughs> thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you very much, Tracy. One of Australia's most popular writers, Winton, is touring the country meeting his younger fans, including students of Whitebridge High School. At 33, the Western Australia-based novelist has written 13 books, most with a coastal theme. Because I was brought up on the beach and went to a sort of a, a coastal high school and I surfed from the age of about eight, but um, I'm writing about what I know, you know, and the kids respond to that. Lockie Leonard is the hero of his latest novel, Scumbuster. Lockie and his mates are uh, trying to clean up the harbour and uh, the, the, the harbour's totally polluted by uh, outfall. And between the lines, there's an environmental message. I think kids realise they're going to inherit it, you know. And we, 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 had a, we had it better than they do. We're making all this gunk and uh, leaving it around for other people to inherit, which scares me, you know. I think that they, they, they've cottoned onto that really quickly. The free service in the Gosford Library will make the sometimes dry, jargon-filled subject of law user-friendly. Books and leaflets in plain English will be available to help people understand the thousands of laws that are there to protect them. If people have any sort of legal query, it might be about disputes with neighbours, it might be uh, a housing settlement of some kind, it might be to do with wills, um, it might be that they have to go to court and they want to know more about it. They might be that they want to prepare themselves to go visit a lawyer. Uh, any of that sort of information, they can come to the Legal Information Access Centre. Ten of the centres have been set up around New South Wales. They are coordinated by the State Library, which has a team of solicitors from the Law Foundation to give advice and update information. The centres are the brainchild of Foundation Director Terence Purcell. I, I suppose I had a part to do with it. Uh, I'd been uh, interested for a long time about how the community actually relate to the legal process and the law. And um, 
became clear to us uh, that uh, the law was being created a huge uh, flow of law from state and parliaments and federal parliaments and the average person it was becoming more and more remote. The centre will be funded by the Law Foundation for the first four years of operation before the council begins paying for it. Jason Neuenhoff, NBN News. Rescue services got the call of a boy over a cliff soon after four. Ten-year-old Joel Foster had slipped ten metres head first onto a rock platform at Glen Rock Lagoon near Newcastle. Incredibly, he survived with just cuts and possible concussion. His friends ran more than a kilometre for help. Oh, look, it's terrible. I'm shaking. I had to wait for the ambulance to come and come down and bring my little daughter with me. And my other little boy was there and he was, would have been very frightened. Ambulance officers treated the boy at the scene and carried him out of the bush. He was then taken to John Hunter Hospital. Peter Ryan, NBN News. After a two-year battle, farmers at Parkville near Scone are bitterly disappointed with the decision. Oh, well, I, I think the whole thing stinks, to be quite honest. Following a special commission of inquiry, Commissioner Cleland gave guarded support for the expansion of a piggery, part owned by the Prime Minister, from 20,000 to 45,000 pigs over five years. The company had initially wanted 86,000 pigs. Farmers are worried about odour and waste water in the $40 million plan. The Commissioner says the potential environmental impacts can be controlled and mitigated by the conditions of consent. That includes increasing the flushing frequency of pig sheds, obtaining additional fresh water and upgrading wastewater facilities. The Commissioner's report is a telling blow for the anti-piggery fight, but the debate is not over yet. State Planning Minister Webster has the final say, and he's expected to make a decision within a month. It will be uh, approached by me with the, same, uh, with the same manner as I have with every other project, that is, it will be considered on its merits. But the Minister has never before gone against a Commission of Inquiry finding. The people of Scone gave a mixed reaction to the announcement. The smell is still going to be a problem. Um, have carting pigs down the road is going to be a problem. There's going to be a lot of problems with it. It'll bring work into the town. That's all we need here. The town's dying, so we need something to boost it up. It could mean 200 jobs for the town. The company, Danpork, says it needs time to study the recommendations. The Prime Minister was unavailable for comment. Farmer and protester Peter Hodges says he has just a few words for Mr Keating. to hear from people who live uh, in the surrounding streets of Taylor Street, uh, Cardiff. Where A daily phone call can make the difference between life and death or even the simple well-being of hundreds of elderly people leading isolated and lonely lives. Red Cross workers were saddened to hear of the death of Islington man Paul Stromsky. Neighbours described the man as a hermit. He hadn't been seen for weeks. The Red Cross runs a phone service called Telecross in which volunteers ring just one housebound, elderly or infirm person each day to check on their well-being. We could have a much bigger program running. Of course we need lots of volunteers to run that program, but um, yes, it's sad that we, we only do just scratch the surface, as you can see by this gentleman slipping through our fingers. We didn't know he was out there and other people didn't know about the program, so it's very sad. News of Paul Stromsky's appalling death prompted some people to volunteer their help to the service today. 
Police located Mr Stromsky's next of kin in Queensland. Newcastle Airport at Williamtown was built in the mid-70s. During the last two decades it remained virtually untouched, but all that is about to change with a $5.6 million overhaul. You won't be able to recognise the existing building. Uh, it's, it's a completely uh, new upgraded facility. It will look like a brand new building. This is what the airport should look like. The new terminal will be fully air-conditioned with state-of-the-art flight information and baggage handling systems. Once they have checked in, there's a whole range of facilities in the airport, like a cafe, a bar and a business lounge. Business travellers are being targeted with both a frequent flyer lounge and undercover security parking planned. Certainly the business market we see is a major market in Newcastle and it does have a much higher percentage of business travel than uh, most other regional airports. Work should begin at the end of April. It's expected to be finished by late October. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Surfest Newcastle Pro Honour Roll reads like a who's who of the world's best surfers. Tom Curran, Damien Hardman, Tom Carroll and last year's winner Barton Lynch. But there's not a Nova Castrian among them. However, that could all change this year. Currently at the moment, rated in the top 44 of the World Championship Tour. They're the best surfers in the world. We have five surfers. That's Luke Egan, Matt Hoy, Nicky Wood and Shane Powell. But today's launch revealed that there's more to surface than just the pro contest, with longboard and wave ski events and the introduction of bodyboards. I've heard of um, events in America having three disciplines of uh, surfing there, but not combining them all under the one umbrella. We have four disciplines, so I'm claiming this is a first for Newcastle and a first for the world. The women's tournament was to be dropped due to a lack of sponsors, but a last minute deal secured a $5,000 event to complement the men's $30,000 contest. The variety of events guarantees some great action on the water, but organisers have taken an even more radical move on land, with a new surfaced line of clothes. If the shorts, hats and shirts are successful locally, sales could be expanded across the country and even internationally. The five-day festival of surfing starts on March 16th, the final of the pro tournament the following Sunday. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. Three Men and a Baby Grand has delighted crowds all over the world with its quirky musical humour. The people of Newcastle have already enjoyed two shows, but Phil Scott on piano, Drew Forsyth and Jonathan Biggins have something special planned for tonight's performance. Their crazy antics are still the same. But this time the Baby Grand will be joined by the Hunter Orchestra. The performance has been given more power, with just as many laughs as the original. If tonight's concert succeeds, the trio plan to repeat the experience with other orchestras throughout the country. The Civic Theatre is booked out, but there are already plans for another performance later in the year. Yeah. 
The next year, I'm hoping um, factors and also when I speak to some of the music and boundaries are expanding. So if you have those, congratulations. Thank you very much. Twenty-nine-year-old Paul Anthony Richardson from Curry pleaded guilty in Newcastle's Supreme Court to murdering Sandra Lee Millwood on May 15 last year. She'd been abducted at knife point from her head and greeter home in the early hours of the morning. Her two children were in the house at the time and raised the alarm. Sandra Millwood's body was found in Tucker's Park behind Curry Golf Club. Her car set on fire. She'd died of severe head injuries. In a videotaped confession to police, Richardson admitted to killing Sandra Millwood. However, for the last three days, lawyers have argued about the admissibility of that evidence. Richardson entered a plea of guilty today. On Monday, a court hearing will determine his sentence. Justice Finlay will take into account Richardson's previous criminal record. He has already served a jail term for the manslaughter of his uncle. Jane Anderson, NBN News. The number of Australians dying from melanoma each year is increasing. Although potentially fatal, this form of skin cancer can be cured if it's detected early enough. Researchers want to find out whether the incidence of melanoma could be reduced if people were given adequate information about just what to look for. More than 300 men from BHP Steelworks are taking part in a study by Newcastle's Melanoma Unit. They're targeting men five. People who are coming along to their doctors with advanced, potentially fatal melanomas are, are in this age group. Everyone involved in the study has been asked to identify the number of moles or changes to skin pigmentation on their arms and upper body. One of the groups was given photographs showing how to identify these markings. The other group had no information to help them. Today, doctors did their own count. We, we want to see if the group that's, uh, that's had the education and material are better at picking up their pigmented lesions than, than the people who haven't. The information will be used to see if an education campaign about the early detection of melanoma could be effective. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Just led mingling glances. Renoki Boy can't get to them. Skating is coming home well, but Silver Flyer clear with 100 to go. He's got them beaten. Silver Flyer's going to win the Liverpool City Cup, rocketing down the outside. Kabora, but Silver Flyer wins. 5, 4 and 1. Silver Flyer, the winner it paid, 4.80 and $1.80. Gary Harley's tip skating finished third. The trifecta just under $1,000. And the Maitland Trots are on tonight. Gary Harley suggests a few dollars on number three in the second.